inside lane Missing exits and glued to the pavement Between the lines, I'll keep my gate straight ahead As the last stop flies by No more waiting for the gun to fire No more walking through revolving doors I've gone around once and I don't need to go around anymore Break away, forget your sober case Stop dwelling on empty words Stop stalling in the doorway And cancel the cruise control yourself is what you'll find me doing every day and every night no time to lose one day one step in the right direction i'm chris and i'm only here to show you if i can do it you can do it too Welcome back to the vlog. It is Saturday, another day, another chance to push hard. And the topic for this vlog is the 60 kilowatt hours DIY power wall from my dad. A grand overview. Nothing more, nothing less. By the way, all the power wall videos. Yeah, let's give it its own playlist right here. Watch them all. But before we get started, love goes out to all my subscribers. Thank you for making my life special and worth living to the max. So let me try to give back with a sweet, sweet video. So what you just saw in the intro, that's my dad's 60 kilowatt hours power wall that we built in early 2000. 2015 so yeah it's like four years ago what the hell three and a half years ago anyway so in this vlog uh, as i said i will just give you an overview i might get into a few details but nothing too specific i will cover all of the specifics in separate vlogs for example balancing monitoring manual balancing and how it's like also connected to the power plant on the roof well to the solar but let's start with how it all started so my dad is an environmentalist basically and a few years ago he got into the second life of laptop batteries, 18650 batteries, rechargeable ones, of course, and mostly lithium ion batteries. This right here. He also did a few experiments with li -fe, lithium iron phosphate and also lithium polymer lipo, but he centered on 18650 lithium ion batteries because they are in abundance on junkyards. <laughs> and after he acquired a few connections and figured out the ways how to get thousands of them. First of all, he got a few from local hardware distributors, just got a few laptop batteries and he did his first experiments with those. But the problem was that they were already fairly old and discharged. Most of them were dead. The connections he acquired a few months later, I think when he got deeper into the community and all of that, like there isn't 
there wasn't much of a community back then. Anyways, once he figured out how to acquire large numbers of these batteries, he basically asked me if I, hey, yo, I will give you money if you do this for me. The deal back then was like to harvest around like 1,300 laptop batteries and he gave me a thousand bucks back then. Freaking slave work, but whatever. It was for a good cause. I covered all of that in multiple weekly vlogs back then. Oh my freaking god, cringe worthy. I cannot watch these vlogs myself. It's so bad. Freaking English skills. But I will list you one of them right here. And this was, well, this vlog was Christmas 2015. This was when I actually finished the harvesting process. I took all the batteries all the battery packs to my place so that I can work on them all the time you have to crack open the plastic and then cut all sorts of connections also freedom of any like sticky tape and all of that that was exhausting and tedious that was a crazy work and then later on I, I soldered them at his place because he has a more powerful soldering iron than me I basically can't solder them this is covered in this vlog I also have taken videos of the process this was on the 5th of February 2016 so this was was three years ago. Back then we made the packs, okay. And then the clips from the intro, they are from 26th of May 2016. So this was three to four months later. And as you saw from the videos, the configuration was 12 parallel in one line and then three lines stacked on top. So 36 parallel. And then six of these stacks are inserted into these holes and they are, they are also connected in parallel. So we are talking about 216 in parallel. And nowadays he's using a 7S configuration. Previously he was using a 4S or a 3S because back then he was using it as a 12 volt. But when we filmed, he was already upgrading to a 24 volts configuration with a 7S configuration. Righty right. So 216P7S is the configuration of one stack. And then he has more uh, like of one giant cluster. And then he also has many clusters. You can also maybe call it a 12P, 3P. 6p and then 7s there is a separate room with even more so by now he's using this system for yeah for freaking three years so he has a bit of long-term data he always tracked and monitored the performance and the charging and re uh, well the, the cycles so there is a lot of a lot of stuff that we could talk about potentially. I got so many questions under the videos, I might get to them eventually. Most of them were about BMS, battery management, balancing actually, and he is not using a balancing system. He is manually balancing them. He has to balance maybe one or two or three packs every other month. So there is so much confusion about this out there. Balancing is necessary for lipos, for example, but for lithium ion batteries, especially with slow charge or like cycles, it's not a necessary thing. And I probably will get to this, to this theory in another vlog, but he is always adamant about the monitoring. You don't need active BMS, but you definitely need to monitor them because that's where it might get dangerous if you don't do this, if you neglect the monitoring. As of now, I do not know the upper limit and the lower limit of the voltage. Maybe it was like 3.2 or like 4.0 or something like that. Anyways, that's another topic for yet another vlog. And as you saw, all of that happened in his basement, pretty much at the center of the house, centered in the basement under his like whatever. And as I said, even though he was monitoring them, also checking it out regularly with a mirror, mirror? MILF, <laughs> like a heat sensing camera. It is still a risk. A fire might not originate from the power wall itself, but if there is a fire and this thing catches on fire, then oh my goodness. I think it will, like the whole house will probably just literally explode. There is so much energy stored in this. It's just insane to store this inside the house. So as of now, like literally currently, he is moving this thing outside and this will of course be yet another interesting insight or project because he's currently facing the problem on how to transport big amps without making too many friction losses. You know, for big amps you need thick wire and if the wire is too thin it will get hot, thus you will lose energy in heat. But thick wires would of course be better but they are heavy and expensive and currently he's solving this issue with rather thick aluminum profiles like in this dimension probably. Yet another interesting topic. And yeah, he's currently moving them outside. So I might get into more topics regarding this DIY power wall. Now that I do my own little power packs, I can basically acknowledge the epicness and the crazy proportions of this project way better. I also wasn't able to understand it back then at all, like no clue about it. But now as I'm getting into 
electronics and stuff like that myself. I can actually talk more about this project, like it just makes more sense now. So I'm sorry that it took me so long. I'm sorry for all the guys and for all the comments. I might eventually get to them finally, but yeah, whatever. As I said, just a grand overview. If you have questions or other topic suggestions, as I said, drop them below. I will also build a Tesla with my dad in the next mm, weeks and months, or maybe even two. So yeah, as I always say, the insanity runs in the family, that's for sure. But yeah, that's enough progress for today. Smash that like button. The way his house would get totally smashed if there would be a fire outbreak. Make the bell like crap. Pop. Never miss DIY Powerwall vlogs. Check the recent news on chrisviral.com. And yeah, that's it for today. I will see you tomorrow.